everyone, it's Alice and today I thought I would share with you a little fiction TBR filled with some books that I really want to try and get to this year. I've picked out 10 books, although I could obviously show you quite a lot more than that, but then we'd be here for like five hours. So I've just picked out 10 that I really want to get to and that I'm the most intrigued by right now. And I gotta say, I do one of these every year <laughs> and I don't end up reading all of the books usually. So, you know, right now these are the ones that I'm most intrigued by and I should really just get better at like checking in with myself throughout the year and like reminding myself of the books that I put in this video. <laughs> Anyways, first I've got a book that came out last year and I am so excited about this book. I don't really know why I didn't just read it when I got it, but I didn't, so it's gonna have to be this year instead. It's The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers by Jen Campbell. And first of all, this book is just gorgeous. Like every time I see this on my shelves, I'm like, oh, I need to get to that. This is an illustrated short story collection filled with gruesome tales. And I'm pretty sure that all of these stories are based on like fairy tales from all around the world, but they've been given a more modern and inclusive take, which I'm all for. And I'm a huge fan of this author's booktube channel and her other books. And I really like the illustrations in here as well. There are loads of them. And I love when there's like illustrations, but also text. And I just think this is gonna be fantastic. Secondly, we've got another sort of gruesome book and it's The Shining by Stephen King. And I guess this could sort of be considered a modern classic at this point, but I've never read it and I don't actually know if I've seen the movie. I feel like I've seen parts of it, but I have a feeling that I didn't make it all the way through because I probably got scared. The story, as I'm sure a lot of you know, is about this man who gets a job as the off-season caretaker of this hotel and he sees this as a great opportunity. He can bring along his family and he can spend quite a lot of his time focusing on his writing. And then, you know, winter rolls around and this place starts feeling more and more remote and more cut off from the world and then things get weird and terrible. And I just think it sounds like a great story and, you know, it's one of those books that's just really fun to have read, you know? Then we have got a book that leans more towards the mystery side of things and it's They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. And I just think the premise of this book sounds excellent. And I've seen this on several people's like favorite books of the year lists and that makes me even more excited to read it. The story is about this exceptional English professor who also happens to be a murderer. And every year she seeks out the worst possible man she can find at her university and she starts plotting his, you know, what she feels is his very well-deserved death. And I just think that sounds really cool. Obviously it wouldn't be cool in real life, but like in a book it sounds cool. And I think what happens is that she loses control at some point and things get kind of sticky and I can't wait to just see how it all turns out. Next, we have got another book with an academic setting and it's These Violent Delights by Micah Nemeriver. And this is like on the top of my list of books with academic settings that I have on my TBR. I really enjoy books with these kinds of settings and this just sounds amazing. It's about these two men who meet at university in the 70s in Pittsburgh somewhere. And I don't really remember what the story is about, but I think they become friends and maybe something more and it gets really, really intense and somehow this drives them to this act of violence, whatever that means. This says it's kind of like The Secret History meets Call Me By Your Name. Two books that I absolutely love, although I'm always wary of anything that says it's like The Secret History because nothing ever is, but that makes me a little more excited and then I just think the story sounds really interesting and kind of unsettling and it seems to deal with a lot of interesting themes. Then we have got a translated book because I'm trying to read more of those this year and it's Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Misuki Sujimura. And this sounds incredibly weird but also kind of cool. And there's something about this cover that just does something for me. This follows seven students who are all kind of 
it seems like they're like avoiding school and they're avoiding their friends and family and somehow they find this portal <laughs> into another world and there's like a castle there and they need to find a key like someone asks them to find a key to the castle maybe i don't really know and then there's something about a monster there that could eat them and i don't really know it sounds super trippy and kind of odd but also really interesting and it just sounds like a very creative story next we have got some science fiction with dawn by octavia e butler and i really don't read a lot of science fiction but i do think it's a very interesting genre and i would like to read more and this one sounds really good the story starts off with this woman who wakes up on a spaceship filled with aliens and it seems like these aliens got to earth like a long time ago right before the human race went extinct because of war and they basically saved the human race by taking her and a bunch of other people on board and they've kept them on this ship for centuries and in the meantime they have like fixed earth somehow and they want her and her people to move back to earth but then i'm assuming there's a catch somewhere and i don't really know what that catch is but i feel like it has something to do with like breeding humans and aliens i don't really know but it sounds disturbing and also super weird i'm also just really excited to finally read something by this author because she has a lot of really interesting books out and i kind of want to read all of them and so I should probably just start making my way through her work. Then we have got more mystery with The Burning Girls by CJ Tudor. And again, I, you know, it's that time of year where a lot of people put out their favorite books of the year lists. And I saw this on a couple of them. And that sort of reminded me of this book and sort of re-sparked my interest in it. This is set in a village in the English countryside. And it's about this man who moves there with his daughter and they're sort of looking for a fresh start and it seems like this man has something weighing on his conscience and he's like trying to run away from something but then this town turns out to be kind of weird and there's a lot of secrets and he gets like a welcome package with some exorcism stuff in it which sounds super weird but i do love a good small town mystery and it sounds like anything that dabbles with like the occult is kind of cool, so I think this is gonna be great. Next, we have got a middle grade book that I've had for a couple of years and I should really just try to get to. It's Wildwood by Colin Malloy. And I like reading a bit of middle grade here and there sometimes just to break things up a little bit. And this one is also illustrated, which makes it even more intriguing. The story in here is about two friends who I think discover a secret world in this magical forest and they go into this world searching for someone who's been kidnapped or something, but then they end up getting caught up in some sort of conflict that's going on in this world and they end up sticking around for a while, I'm assuming, especially because this book is kind of chunky. I'm assuming quite a lot happens and I just think it sounds really charming and anything to do with a magical forest is like, that's enough for me. Second to last, we have got The Glass House by Eve Chase. And this is one of my favorite covers for whatever reason. I think it's because green is my favorite color. Like I love earthy type greens. And so I just find this very pleasing. And I also love this little house that's in the glass dome. This is set in this remote manor house where we meet this couple who are grieving for some reason and something happens and they like find a girl like a baby girl out in the woods by their house and this sort of pulls them out of their grief and they immediately love this child and so they decide to keep her without really telling anyone which is kind of weird and I just think it sounds really interesting. I think this is one of those books that has like dual perspectives. So there's one set in the present and one set in the past. And I feel like for this kind of story, that's probably gonna work really well. And it sounds kind of dark and has a lot of secrets in it, all of which I love. Lastly, we have got a book that I'm pretty sure has been in one of these videos before, like a couple of years ago or something. And like I mentioned, I don't always end up reading all the books despite my best intentions. So here it is again. It's Everything I Never Told You 
by Celeste Ng. I think the reason that I haven't read this book yet is that I loved the book Little Fires Everywhere by this author. It's one of my favorites and this is the only other book that she's written. And so when I've read this, I will have nothing else by her to read and to look forward to. And so I keep putting it off because I don't want to like run out of her books, even though I really do want to read this. I just, for some reason, I'm like putting it off which is kind of insane. This does sound really good though. It's about this Chinese American family living in a small town in Ohio in the 70s. And the parents of this family are convinced that the eldest daughter and their favorite child is gonna be able to fulfill all of the dreams that they were never able to pursue. But then the daughter dies. And I think the story is all about how the family copes with that, which I'm guessing is not well. Okay, everyone, that was a lot of books, but it was everything I had to show you today. And I'm really excited about all of these books. And maybe this will be the year where I end up actually reading all of them. I guess we'll see. I'd love to know what books are on your fiction TBR for the year, though. And as usual, links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description if you're interested. And I will see you soon.